what if the key to securing our future doesn't lie in the technologies that we've invented, nor in the technologies that we're yet to invent, nor in any of the present that surrounds us, not even in the future, but in our deep past, woven into the 14 billion year old tapestry of the universe. Over this vast time span, systems have emerged, evolved, and complexified, all abiding by and exhibiting behaviors and patterns that are unifying, and in abidance to cosmic, organizing, fundamental laws. Take the second law of thermodynamics. It tells us that all systems tend toward entropy or disorder, which means that the more energy we transform, the more entropy or chaos we're creating within our environment. Over billions of years, the universe has balanced these forces of chaos and order, destruction and rebirth. In our short history, humans have achieved extraordinary things breaking out of the biosphere and into the realm of conscious thought. Although we're the only species to have done this, we, our artifacts, our activities, our behaviors, our cities and systems are all part of nature, albeit a highly complexified nature. Take the way we design our homes. To build the places we love, we take resources from the world. Sand, water, gravel, and those materials go through complex global commodity chains involving people, systems, carbon-intensive processes, emitting particles that are harmful to human and biological life. And at the end of their life, these pre-loved homes contribute to mountains of waste around our world. Faced with the challenge of homing 11 billion human souls by the end of the century, some have proposed stringent population control or a selective planetary exodus. Yet when we observe how systems and relationships have evolved in nature, we see that abundance, symbiosis, and collaboration are central to the process of evolution. From stars to cars, from bacterial to human cultures, everything is interconnected and bound by thermodynamic laws. So when we approach a problem, we must treat it as a part of an interconnected greater whole. And no place is this better represented than right beneath our feet in the world of fungi. Over a billion years, fungal networks have evolved to distribute resources throughout ecosystems, using intricate channels to share nutrients and life-given information. Over that time, these intricate channels have transformed death into new life. They're able to eradicate the idea of waste mountains in non-human nature. Noticing this, we decided to look at how mycelium can help us build solutions for how we build our homes. Its intricate and porous structure was ideal for insulation, so we developed a carbon-negative, completely natural mycelium insulation product that is outperforming other leading products in the market. We foraged mushrooms from the forest, and then we took them to the lab where we use directed evolution, where we replicate evolutionary forces in the wild and collaborate with them to guide them as they grow, to give us the properties desired by industry. We then work with them to understand what green chemicals and additives they can give us to actually enhance the properties of our material. And this created an insulation product that is premium in performance, but not in price. This has forever changed the narrative around natural building materials. When nature is brought to the table as something that we can work with to build global decarbonization systems, we need to think about the food sources that we're using. We don't rely on a single food source like hemp or timber or um, bamboo. 
We break down waste into particles and compounds, nature's building blocks, and then hierarchically reconstruct them. We create materials the way nature creates matter, a feedstock agnostic process that enables us to create materials anywhere in the world where waste mountains lie. This enables us to create hyper-local nodes of global regeneration. 100,000 homes insulated equals over a million tons of carbon sequestered. When nature is brought to the table as a collaborator rather than a resource, it surprises us what we can achieve. Our fungal strains even developed an appetite for plastic, prompting us to look at how we can build cocktails of bacteria and fungi that can break down harsh toxins and plastic waste. Now, although our fungal friends never cease to amaze us, we can intentionally engineer the conditions to make such serendipity a regular occurrence through biomimicry, holistically emulating natural and human systems to create solutions that are system to the energetics and cybernetics of their environment. Now, although our charismatic fungi can show us the way, and we can wait for inspiration to strike, we can effectively retrieve the leaves of nature's book and access an incredible 14 billion years of evolutionary strategies and knowledge in advancing technologies, giving us a blueprint to create technologies and solutions that meet the needs of our socio-economic systems, but also of our planet. Now, if we think of everything in the world that can affect a system on Earth and everything that this system can affect, we can categorize all of those things into 12 forces that drive the process of natural selection today. These forces act on every single one of us on a regular basis. They influence how systems are viable or are able to survive within their environment. If we're able to develop solutions and take into consideration how they impact the 12 selection forces, but how they're impacted by them as well, then we can build regenerative solutions by default. By Carrying out analytical and creative searches and simulations, both in the universe and in the metaverse, against the 12 selection forces, we are embedding regenerative impact in every solution and anything that we're creating. We can even use the selection forces as impact categories, where we can measure the level of regenerative impact a solution is having against every single force. And this will enable us to embed proper regeneration within the future technologies that we're working towards. We often look to the future for answers, but perhaps the key to securing our future lies in the deep past. The laws of the cosmos that have borne all of the wonderful flora and fauna and natural phenomena that we cherish today may hold the cure to our maladaptation to our Earth system. A biomimetic future is not only present in the architectural forms that subjectively beautify our cities, nor in the legs of autonomous machines, but in our thinking, our social constructs, and our economic systems. And this will enable us to secure our future, because the Earth will be fine, she will continue to evolve, ecosystems will emerge and prosper. That might leave you thinking, well, is our future worth securing at all? Well, if we bring evolutionary learning to the decision-making table, we can change humanity's role in the story of cosmic evolution. From the species that has lost touch with nature and the cosmos, resulting in a rapid and momentous loss in an unprecedented advancement and biodiversity in the evolutionary code. To the species that has managed to achieve incredible breakthroughs in the story of evolution, breaking out of the biosphere, creating ideas, thoughts, language, theories, humor, memes, music, and art. The species that turned mountains of waste into global nodes of regeneration and homed 11 billion human souls in houses that regenerate the Earth. The species that enabled the universe 
to consciously reflect on itself, not just through us, but through our artificially intelligent creations. This does not make us special or superior in any way, but it gives us an important role and immense responsibility in the story of evolution. And that, in my opinion at least, makes our future worth securing. Thank you all very much.